everyone, it's another video with me and Spock. So today I want to share about why you should get a poodle instead of a doodle in San Francisco. And I see people get doodles all the time in San Francisco, like they are so common, way more than poodles. It's very rare to see actually a purebred poodle and even rare to see a purebred toy poodle because they tend to be like cockapoo mixes or multi-poo multi mixes or uh, even those like... Um, what they call the cavapoos as well. So I'm gonna go over why you should get a poodle and I have some notes here I'm gonna be referencing. So the first thing is that the temperament of poodles are very consistent if you get them from a show breeder. So, you know, when you do shows, you have to like be able to walk for the judges, you know, walk well on leash, not bark, and also be able to be comfortable with times that you're traveling that you're gonna be in your crate for a really long time. So those are traits that breeders breed for. And in addition, when you get a poodle, you can see the lineage of their parents and how their parents behave, even sometimes even grandparents. And you, you don't really get that as much with doodles because the breeders aren't really tracking those things. Versus with a poodle, there is uh, intentional breeding, especially among uh, reputable breeders like service dogs or show dogs or other line of work. And to touch on that they also tend to be healthier because of the fact that they are doing lineage tracing they are seeing what the health problems are of certain gene pools and they're trying to eliminate that or they try to bring more genetic diversity like for example his father was from i think from overseas from japan or korea and uh, that's the reason why they were brought over to breed is because they wanted to increase genetic diversity within the pool so they wanted to, you know, have a healthier dog, and that is something that you don't really get as much with doodle owners because oftentimes doodle, not doodle owners, doodles, doodle breeders, they tend to breed for cuteness or smallness or just to make money, frankly, which is like probably the number one incentive for most of the doodle people who sell doodles or people breeders. And Another way is you can tell how healthy an animal is by the structure and by the gait. And some doodles, their their gait is kind of clumsy, you know? Like if you look at the structure, oftentimes they're very like heavy footed. Whereas with a poodle, with their structures when they walk, like a well-bred poodle, they have this like very light, uh, it's like this prancing motion, you know? They always look like they're prancing, you know? When they're looking like they're prancing or, or trotting, that's a sign of a good structure. And there's also, you know, books out there that will tell you, like, good structure in terms of, like, what to look for, you know, those show guidebooks, but, um, but yeah, that is an important thing of why a lot of show dogs are very prioritized in structures, because those show guidelines measure for that, and of course, again, I'm talking about well-bred poodles, there's a lot of backyard poodles that are bred who look, you know, they just look awkward, like, stumpy, or their torso's too long, or their back is not straight, you know, things like that that you don't want the animal to have. Obviously, you want an animal to have a straight, functioning back, you know, healthy eyes, healthy nose, you know, healthy snout, you know, things like that. Healthy legs, good bones, you know. They tend to, you know, have fragile bones from, you know, bad breeding, or sometimes just thin bones because of the, uh, the certain, you know, genetic uh, dispositions their parents may have, and that happens to be why the reasons why they have like hip problems or you know easy to break their legs things like that so you want to look for that and when you breed a golden retriever let's say with a poodle it doesn't eliminate those problems because those breeds have those problems so if you breed them together it might even increase the likelihood of those problems in pairing so it doesn't eliminate it and let's say uh, another part of it is why you should get a poodle, a well-bred poodle, is because they have a function they've bred for, for many years to do. A toy poodle, I think, was bred to be a companion, uh, companion, but a standard poodle was bred originally have a job of retrieving fowls, so they're bred very intentionally for a job. With a lot of doodle breeders, they're not really breeding for any job, they're just breeding it for cuteness and selling it, so that lack of job is something that's really important to having a well-bred dog, because there's like intentionality in it, and versus just like breeding as many as you can to sell. Yeah. Um, and another big part of it surprisingly is that they actually cost sometimes less than a doodle so doodles can cost five thousand and up in this area and poodles can range well toy poodles i don't know about standards i think they might be a little bit less but toy poodles because of the size of the litter tends to be usually two or three 
they are 2500 to 3500 sometimes up to 4000 I guess now because uh, it's a new year, but... Um, so yeah, they can actually cost less, but the only caveat is that there is oftentimes a waiting list on them because they are a small litter. So the breeders will have a waiting list that can, you know, range up to six months, sometimes even a year. Whereas with doodle owners, since they're breeding them in mass scale, or doodle, I keep saying owner, doodle breeders, I guess the breeders and owners, they breed on mass scale. So they can have one available for you like ASAP. Uh, and health setting, I mentioned this before. It's important because not only is it for the, the health of the dog, but also the breeder's reputation is on the line too. You know, if the dog's not healthy and if, you know, in the industry, in the industries or the communities of with, especially with the show breeders, you know, they have a reputation to uphold. And if their dogs are not sound and they're breeding them nilly willy, like they're breeding them more than, let's say, once a year on a mass scale, that kind of thing is like kind of frowned upon. Well, not kind. It is frowned upon in that community. So the person's reputation is on the line versus doodle breeders. They don't really have that standard. You know, they're not breeding for show. And uh, a lot of times they're just breeding for the cuteness. They're not breeding, you know, as intentionally because of the fact that they're not doing health testing, all these things. And another thing is that toy poodles are just smaller. You know, they're just like little cute purse boys. Like he loves being in a bag. He will jump in a bag as soon as I pull one out because he just loves riding and coasting on it. Versus, you know, with the golden doodle or a cavapoo, you're going to get a bigger dog. But with the toy poodle, since both parents are small, they're going to be like four to 10 pounds max, usually. And also lastly, their fur is a lot easier to take care of because they mat way less. Whereas versus with poos, uh, cavapoos, they can mat a lot because if you mix a uh, animal that has, or I mean, mix a dog that has a straight, you know, kind of, fur with a curly fur, then the results are going to be hard to manage. Versus with poodles, they're a lot easier to manage because it's a lot more consistent in the, in the texture. So uh, poodles are also really cute too. I mean, come on, look at them, you know, like look at, look at this little snail, you know, and they're easier to style too. So big pluses. I think I covered almost everything here in this video. Just uh, overview is cost less, even though you have to wait a little longer. They're very cute, they're smaller. Look at them, they have different colors too. They have silver, like this one, and black, and apricot, and and uh, red. So, uh, also, there's they're all more consistent, you know, you know what you're gonna get from based on what the parents are like, and they're a lot more healthier overall than most. Like, if you compare well bred toy poodles with overall doodles, or even well bred doodles, they tend to be healthier because, again, there's that lineage, that genetic pool tracking, you know, that goes back. So, yeah, I hope this video helps. I know this is an opinion that may be controversial, but I'm making this video so that anyone who wants to be informed about what it's like owning a poodle versus a doodle and the research I did can watch this video and reference that. And he's been great. Like his temperament is so good. He's like literally the most well-behaved boy. He goes to his all obedient classes and he's like the number one, like most, like most behaved dog in almost every class he goes to. He's like consistently a top performing student. I'm saying this because this is something that, you know, if you have a well-bred poodle, you know, like, you're not going to be super impressed by this. But I'm just saying, as someone who has had different dogs that I've interacted with, he is by far one of the best in temperament and everything. Just keep just looking at him. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and click that notification bell and that subscribe button and see you all next time. Bye.